Hi, Library Associates. Welcome again to the Maryland Public Library team. In this short video, we will take a look at how public libraries are organized in Maryland. You will be introduced to some of our state and professional resources and begin to discuss how libraries bring value to their communities. Let's get started. Public libraries in each state are set up differently with different regulations and sources of funding. We are fortunate in Maryland to have great supporting legislation and funding. The Maryland State Library is no longer under the Department of Education. It is now a separate agency with its own board. The State of Maryland approves a budget for the State Library. The Maryland Library for the Blind and Physically Handicapped, renamed as of October 1st, 2020, the Maryland Library for the Blind and Print Disabled, falls under the Maryland State Library. SLRC and the regional centers make interlibrary loans of books and materials. They supply collections and exhibits of specialized materials. They provide consultant services. They organize in-service training for library staff. And they develop and operate cooperative services among libraries, for example, databases. Funding for SLRC and Regional Resource Centers are based on a per capita assessment from the state. SLRC also provides backup reference services for your system. We can call them at any time to have them help with difficult reference questions. Each county's public library is administered by a Board of Trustees to whom the Director or Chief Executive Officer reports. This board is composed of people from the local community. Although the state defines a minimum budget, the vast majority of the budget of each library system comes from the county or the city. In the early start portion of LATI and in your discussion with your library director or CEO and in the board meeting that you attended, you probably started to develop a picture of who your library stakeholders are. However, some of your stakeholders may never even come into your library. A recent study by OCLC and ALA found that the majority of voters do come in the library, and that is good news. However, these voters often have no idea where library funding is coming from. But the good news is most voters are supportive of library services. But that hasn't necessarily protected libraries from budget cuts. Libraries across the state and the U.S. have been challenged by budget cuts. Another recent challenge, and due to COVID-19, libraries are facing an increase in cuts as well. And while we have seen cuts on the local and state level, more recently there have been proposals to eliminate all library and museum funding in the federal budget. While the portion of the federal budget allocated to libraries is minimal, its elimination would have a profound impact on our ability to deliver services here in Maryland and across the country. Here's just a sampling of how libraries across the state are funded. As you can see, most of our libraries here in Maryland depend primarily on county funding. The Enoch Pratt Free Library receives more money from the state since it is the Maryland State Library Resource Center. Now, one thing that is a little misleading in the charts is the state money. Currently, the state of Maryland receives LSTA, Library Services and Technology Act, of almost $3 million from the Institute of Museums and Library Services, or IMLS. As mentioned, there have been recent proposals to completely defund IMLS. Fortunately, these proposals have not passed. There has been a lot of effort made by library organizations all over the world to come up with a method to measure the value of libraries. The problem with these valuation methods is that the easiest numbers to obtain are the ones that discuss economic expenditures or how much were saved due to borrowing rather than purchasing. Unfortunately, this number does not capture activities like helping people get jobs, helping people who are, home who are homeless get back on their feet helping people get appropriate medical care or understand their options, 
helping people to retrain to meet new challenges, helping people with diverse needs accomplish their goals, helping communities recover from crises, and helping to prepare children to develop 21st century skills. While we see the value we deliver to our customers every day, the people who never set foot in the library may not understand the importance of libraries in their communities. Public libraries have been working diligently on ways to communicate the value that we bring. So, libraries have also been collecting real-life stories of libraries, making a difference in people's lives. Every library staff member has an important role in collecting and communicating these stories. The Maryland Library Association, or MLA, and Citizens for Maryland Libraries, or CML, have strong advocacy initiatives. If you're on their mailing lists, you will be contacted when important legislation comes up on the federal or state level. This gives us the opportunity to contact our representatives to encourage them to support the library. Library customers can also participate. These advocacy groups also have toolkits designed to help libraries get their message across to legislators and the public. To prepare for our class, think about the different ways your library system is communicating the value of your library to its stakeholders. Also, think about answers to these questions. Has your library system experienced budget cuts or the threat of them? Has your library system had to cut programs or services? How does your library system fund new programs or services? And do you have major donors or other unusual sources of funding?